Hey, welcome to the Bagwas Gourmet. Today we're going to do some campfire cooking right out here in the middle of the green swamp. We've got us a nice site. That's a good time to go gather some firewood and get our fire going. All right, so we're looking for some firewood. We did bring some from home, and we, we want to find hardwood for sure. Um, you know, most of it's just going to be used to get started with some, you know, some smaller stuff. And there's plenty of it laying around. We're all up in the oak trees here. So we'll gather a pile. We had some in our fire pit when we came out, but it was all pine. I also got a huge fire ant nest in my fire pit. But we'll work around that. We got some cowboy lump going there because the ground's wet where somebody drowned out their fire. So today, we're going to do something you have not seen on our channel yet, even though it is part of our logo. We're actually going to use the tripod. We're going to suspend our Dutch oven over campfire, and we're going to cook up a simple but delicious Salisbury steak and a veg right out here on the camp. It's going to be great. All right, guys, as usual, we have our Dutch ovens in our, our Bass Pro Shop Dutch oven carrying bags. Uh, you can find those on our, the Lodge version of those on our Amazon store. We'd appreciate it if you guys would go over there and check that out. And um, if you don't see what you want there, just use the search bar to buy anything on Amazon. Then I have this device here. This is a pot hanging device, and it's adjustable in height. Uh, one of our subscribers, uh, Chris, made this on his forge and i love love handmade items like this um you can see the detail in that and you know it's going to work out great we're hanging our pot i'm not sure which end is supposed to go to the top but i'm going to say it's the fatter one all right just like that and that gives us a hook this adjustable so this uh adjustment tool that chris made me is pretty easy to just uh, click down a notch or two. And you got four holes that are spread out about three inches apart. So it makes it really easy to adjust your pot height. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start our prep for our Salisbury steak. going to be a uh, one large onion this is sweet onion you can use a regular yellow onion if you like I don't need to cut it diced I just want it to be chopped and I got our good old camp plate there for the Salisbury steak So we're gonna go ahead, I hope you guys can see this. Uh, the sun just popped right through the trees here on me. And that stainless steel bolt is reflecting it right back at the cameras. Here we go, it's about a pound and a half ground chuck. I'm gonna go ahead and just break that up in my bowl a little bit so we can get some seasoning on it pretty uh, evenly. And here's some of our Backwoods Gourmet steak and brisket rub. I'm gonna go in pretty Pretty lib with that. Hey, we gotta go get some simple swamp go. season. Some too. swamp season, some fire in the swamp. I've really started loving this fire in the swamp. If you guys wanna uh, try this out, you know, we do a giveaway once a month from Seminole Swamp Seasoning. And uh, we, we select the winner from the people who comment on the channel. So if you wanna have a chance to win uh, some Seminole Swamp Season, Leave us a comment uh, right down in the comments section below. We, uh, we read every single comment on our channel still today, and that's a lot. 
All right, so there we go. We got uh, our seasoned ground beef. Now I'm gonna go into about about two tablespoons of Worcestershire. It will go a little more, but I'm gonna put some of this my steak and briskets or my brisket sauce in here, which has uh, some more Worcestershire in it. So dribble a little bit of that, and that is a. Uh, Big secret recipe, I'll give it to you right now. It's steak and brisket rub. Half and half sweet baby Ray's original and Worcestershire sauce. Big secret, right? Okay, now we gotta go in with one egg. It's gonna help to bind them. And then um, let's mix that in first and then we'll put in some breadcrumbs and that's gonna hold it all together. Probably the best way to mix this is with your fingers. Uh, I'm not doing that because I have uh, some all natural in insect spray on my hands because the yellow flies lo love to bite your knuckles. And um, it's essential oils, but I still don't really want that in my Salisbury steak. So the egg looks pretty well mixed in there. Let's go ahead and add about a half a cup maybe of breadcrumbs. I don't want it to be too bready. You can kind of see it when it all comes together if they're nice and tight. And uh, it's just enough breadcrumbs to kind of soak up the egg and the Worcestershire. All right, it looks pretty good. Now what we do, we set it aside and just for a little while while we're messing with the fire, Mrs. Backwoods is out gathering some more limb wood down stuff around here to get our coal bed going good but what needs a little minute to set so the moisture soaks into the breadcrumbs. Let's take it back in the cooler be ready to go in a minute. All right guys it's been a little minute so we're just going to go in there with our hands now I did wash my hands off completely and I'll just have to reapply the spray. We just want to make a patty it's, I like to make mine oblong like that and about a half an inch thick. As we do that, we'll just try to get the same amount every time so they cook evenly. I'm going to make four today. Just me and Mrs. Backwoods here. Four is going to fit in that 12 inch perfectly. You got a bigger oven, you might be able to get eight in there. If you got a bigger family, if you got more than that, you're going to have to go to a 14 inch. Alright, we're going to go ahead and gently drop our Salisbury's in there. I did lift this thing back up. Air with the fire under there. And those five are going to fit in there just fine. All right, those guys have browned off well enough. Thought I could have used uh, additional egg in them, falling apart a little bit. But, or maybe too many breadcrumbs, I don't know. It's a little more awkward to deal with them here on the hanging pot. I'm gonna go ahead and take these out. I'm gonna pour off the extra grease. I'm gonna saute off the onions and start making our broth or gravy. I'll let those uh, onions sweat it down a bit. Going in here with the beef broth. This is bone broth. It's about two tablespoons of that. We'll start it out with uh, two cups of water and uh, let it come up a little bit to a, a boil and then we'll put in another two cups. 
for this. This is a portobello mushroom uh, juice where we sauteed the portobello mushrooms really slowly. And we use that with our brisket. That's going to be awesome with this too because the essence of all the portobello mushrooms. And then we're going to put in some, some mushrooms also. It's up to a simmer now. Go, go ahead and dump in a whole pack. It's eight ounces of sliced mushrooms. About an additional cup of water. I'll let that come back up to simmer. Now, if you don't like mushrooms, leave them out, okay? People always uh, leave comments about a particular ingredient they don't like. This is not a recipe, just a guide. All right, that's up to boil. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start adding cornstarch to thicken this broth. I don't want to get it over thick at this point. This is about three tablespoons of cornstarch. Do a little more. Because it's gonna reduce down quite a bit and thicken as it as it cooks. Like it about when it coats the back of the spoon, we'll go with the rest of it. So that was three tablespoons of cornstarch for this much uh, liquid. Now we put a lot more ingredients in there, so we're gonna have to season this a little more. So we're gonna do that next. Just a good shake of our steak and brisket rub, salt, pepper, garlic, a little rosemary, and thyme. And now we're out back in there with our Salisbury steaks. We're going to get a lid on it and we'll let that simmer for about 30 minutes. So over here off the side of my fire, I prepared my little camp grill great little setup. I got some cowboy lump going in the in the little camp made collapsible charcoal chimney. And then uh, got my grill going on there. What are we gonna do here? One of my favorites. Some roasted sweet corn. So I got two nice fresh ears, some Florida sweet corn right there, some early crop. Gonna sit that right on top of there. We'll turn it every once in a while. It's gonna be great. Everything's done. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just shuck that corn up. You might want to do this away from where you're eating it though, because it might flake off some ash. Oh man, it's looking pretty good. Now, if you're gonna eat around the campfire, just strip a bag like that. 
is gnaw on. So we're going to put it on the plate, so I'm going to go ahead and snap it off. Put it on the plate right there, and he says, wrap it in a fire. Go in on some of our Salisbury steak. I wish I could show you all some smells. That gravy. Pretty daggum awesome. Got to get some of that right over the top. Now that's some camp food to impress all your campers. I tell you what, man, that was awesome. I hope you guys go out and try this for yourself. It's really easy to do in a Dutch oven uh, and just as easy to do over a campfire as it is to do with some charcoal. So if you like what we're doing, please smash that like button right down there. To subscribe to our channel, you can do it right over there for a whole playlist of cast iron Dutch oven videos going to be right up there. And for a new playlist coming up shortly, a campfire cooking is going to be right over there. We'll see you next time. Thank you.